Chris and welcome to Edge CGI. This is the first part of a four part tutorial series where I teach you how to sculpt a T-Rex with mechanical parts. So this video series assumes that you have little to no experience with ZBrush. I'll be teaching you the basics as well as some more advanced techniques. So when you start up your copy of ZBrush you should get a screen very similar to this. This right here is Lightbox. It's a very quick way to access your projects, your brushes, textures, and more. So let's go ahead and just start off with a simple default sphere. Just go ahead and double click on this icon right here. If you've been working on something previously, ZBrush will ask you if you would like to uh, save your changes or just say no. So I'll, I've done nothing in this project, so I'll just click on no. And here you are with a very basic sphere. To navigate in ZBrush, just click in an empty area and move your mouse or tablet. I recommend using a tablet. To zoom in, press Alt, click, and then let go of Alt. To snap to various views like front, left, right, top, bottom, back, just uh, look at that area and press Shift. When you hover over your sphere, you should see two small red dots. Those indicate that symmetry is on. So when you perform an action on either side, it will be mirrored on the other side. Uh, let's go ahead and choose a different material. To choose a different material, just click on this round, round icon here. And here are all of your materials that ZBrush has by default. You can always go to PixLogic.com and download more. However, I think the best material is this one right here, matte cap gray. Once you've chosen that, you can select the color. I like to just use a regular gray color. However, if you're feeling adventurous, you can choose a different type of color. And sometimes I do mix up the color. Sometimes if, you're, if I'm modeling something organic, I like to use more of an organic skin tone. But for this video, I'll just go ahead and use a light gray color. So to sculpt, just go ahead and hover over your object and click on it and hold and begin moving it around. Now I will be using three main techniques in this video for this first part. I'll first use the clay build up brush. So go ahead and press B to access your brushes. If you want to limit the brushes visible, you can also press um, a hotkey. So if I want to see only the brushes with C in it, I'll go ahead and press C. And now only the brushes with that start with C are visible. So go ahead and find the brush called Clay Buildup and click on it. And now when you click on your object, you will be using the Clay Buildup brush. So over here you have your alphas. Alphas are like small textures that can change the way your brush works. When I use clay buildup, I mainly use two different alphas or two different settings here. The default is the square alpha. This is great for slowly and gradually building up detail, especially for building up muscle. I like to build up these muscle fibers like so. So it's very great for gradually building up detail. You can also turn the alpha off and this will give you a much softer effect. So I like to use this as well. The second tool I will be using, I'll go ahead and press B, is the Move Brush. So just go ahead and press M and find where it says Move. This is a great brush for quickly moving around your geometry. Okay, the third technique I will be using is available right here. On the right you have your tool bar, your tool menu, so just go ahead and click on Geometry and go ahead and click on Dynamesh. So, first of all, before you click on Dynamesh, you need to set the resolution right here. The lowest you can go is 16. However, for right now, I'll go ahead and set it to 32. And then I'll go ahead and press Dynamesh. I'll just say no. So now Dynamesh is active. It's orange here. And what Dynamesh is, it's a great way to quickly build up your geometry. So, if I'm using the Move tool, and I'm quickly moving things around, you can see a problem begins to form. And that, and that is that the geometry becomes very stretched out. Dynamesh fixes this problem. So to activate Dynamesh, 
to redynamish, hold control and make an empty selection. So I'm going to hold control and just make an empty selection here. And you can see that mesh has become active and has given me much more even geometry to work with. So once again, notice that right now we have even geometry and it's very good for sculpting. However, if I move it out using the move tool, or in this case I'm using move topological, move topological is very similar to move, so don't worry about that for now. It differs in some situations, but for our intents and purposes, move topological is pretty much the same as move. Once I've used that, and if I press Shift F to activate my polyframe, you can see that the geometry has become very stretched, and now it becomes very difficult to actually sculpt on it. You can see it gives us this really bad effect. It's still trying to do something, but it doesn't look that great. So go ahead and hold Control, make an empty selection, and now it will redynamish this area and give us nice even geometry to work with. And now we can continue to sculpt. Alright, some other things you might need to know is if you hold control and move your um, uh, cursor over some geometry, this will create a mask. If I switch to clay buildup and begin sculpting, you can see that the masked area is not affected by the sculpting. If I hold control and just click, not make selection but just click, it will invert my selection. So now only the inside area will be sculptable. So this is a great way if you want to only affect certain areas. So let's say I only want to go ahead and move this area. I'll go ahead and mask it off. And right here is the floor. You can press this button to deactivate the floor. It can sometimes get in the way. Alright, so I've masked off this area. And as you can see that I'm pressing shift to snap my view. It's very helpful. Alright, now I'll go ahead and hold control. Click an empty area. That will give me this. And now I can easily use the move tool to only move this area. And of course, whenever you use the move tool, you always want to go ahead and rotate your camera. You don't want to get stuck on one viewpoint. You want to rotate your camera around and do this. And now I can go ahead and hold control. And one more time, and that will go ahead and redynamize this area. And now I can continue sculpting on this and working on this. Alright, that's it for the introduction. Let's go ahead and get to the meat of the video. Alright, we're going to go ahead and quickly set up some a reference image. So, go under the t on the top menus, go under Draw, then find where it says Left Right, click on the first map, click on Import, and now you can navigate to where you keep your reference images. I go to the ZBrush main directory, under Z Projects, I made a folder called T-Rex, and there I have a few reference images. And as you can see that shows up, it uh, shows up on the grid. On that button on the right there are three small little icons inside of the main icon. There's X, Y, and Z. I've turned on the Y grid. So that was the green grid that you saw at the bottom. If you're used to working with other 3D programs you may know that X is left and right, Y is front and back, and Z is up and down. In ZBrush it's actually a little bit different. The Y is actually up and down. So if you're working, if you're used to working with 3ds Max like I am, then the z-axis is basically the y-axis in ZBrush. So here I'm taking that sphere, and because I've activated the reference images, the sphere has actually become transparent. And if you turn off the floor, the grid, then it will uh, stop being transparent. So right now I'm taking that image, that sphere, and scaling it down using the transpose tools. Simply press uh, W, E, and R to or R to activate those three tools W for move, E for scale, and R for rotate. So basically just press E, uh, draw the transpose line over the sphere, and then click on one of the red circles in the middle to scale it down. Here I'm pressing Shift F to activate polyframe mode just to see what my mesh looks like. So here I'm just using the move tool and moving that sphere parts of the sphere along the reference image to create the actual shape of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
and every time it gets too stretched I just go ahead and hold control and make it empty selection to redynamish. So especially in this part because it's a very it's a more complex part than the main body, so I have to redynamish quite a few quite a few times to get the shape. At this point the resolution that you're using might be too small, so you might want to increase it. I started out with 16 resolution for the dynamish, but you may want to go ahead and increase it to 32. I usually stick with the power of 2, so I go from 16, 32, 64, 128, and so on. Here what I'm doing is I'm making a uh, holding control, making the selection, and then using the move tool to drag it out, and then redynamishing. And so here I'm using this to make the T-Rex's arms. So dynamish along with the move tool, it's a, it's a very great way to quickly build up your forms and create the all the limbs and shapes of your creature. Now, a lot of people might say that this is easier to do with Z-spheres, and they may be right. However, I think it's a, it's a great idea to have an understanding of the importance of Dynamesh, because it, it's a new tool. Z-spheres have been around since the, pretty much the beginning of ZBrush, but Dynamesh is a lot more recent, so I think I, I've decided to go with Dynamesh for this video. And, and a great thing about Dynamesh is it gives you more of the feeling that you're working with you know, organic clay. So you're not working with, uh, if you're working with uh, z-spheres, you're more, you're, more you're more working with parameters. Okay? And uh, here you're working with actual, more like you're working with actual clay and or organic sculpting material. Here I'm doing the same thing for the leg, holding control, making a selection, inverting it, using the clay build-up tool, and then finally using the move tool. So I do take a break every once in a while to kind of rotate around the model, making sure everything is correct. You never want to get stuck on this viewport. Here I'm using the inflate tool. So just go ahead and press B to access your brushes. Press I to narrow it down to the brushes that start with I. And then go ahead and select your inflate tool. Or it might just be called inflat because some, some of the uh, names of the brushes are contracted. And here I'm just using the move tool to kind of flatten out the bottom of the foot. Maybe using the clay build up brush. Sometimes you can use the clay build up brush, sometimes you can use the inflate brush. And here what I'm doing is kind of building up his legs. You can see the T Rex still looks kind of uh, angular on his main body, on the neck, and on the head. We'll fix that later, so don't worry about that. Here I am building up some mass on his tail. One thing that if y if you've been watching a lot of uh, you know uh, ZBrush videos and if you if you if you've been seeing a lot of sculptures, you may have been impressed by all the detail and y you may be anxious to start working on that detail. But what I recommend to you is don't get anxious, uh, don't skip the the foundation stages. In other words, some people are so eager to start working on the details and the wrinkles and all the impressive stuff that they miss that they miss the fact that it's a process and you start off with a kind of an ugly model but it's important for you to have an understanding of its proportions its its forms and then you gradually start refining it more and more until it starts looking correctly so basically if you're looking at this at, at this sculpt and thinking that looks really ugly right now th that's not the important thing right now right now we're working on getting all the geometry where it needs to be and preparing it for more detailed sculpting it's a very important stage that you should take your time on and not skip. Otherwise you'll get a model that has lots of wrinkles, lots of little pores and details, but its forms are pretty bad. And I would say that the proportions and forms of a, mo of a model, of a sculpt, are more important than all the little details you put into it. So it's more important that you get this stage right than all the little wrinkles and details. So here I'm just using clay buildup to define his jaw. And another brush I use is a standard brush, which is the, the most basic brush he brush has to offer. And I use that to define the edges. Here I'm just kind of smoothing out the body a little bit. I've uh, turned off perspective mode 
going back using the move tool and now I'm going to go ahead and fix up his body a little bit more make sure it matches the reference image more just smoothing things out and now it's time to fix his tail so if you're working with a lower resolution you might not have enough resolution to accurately position the tail so this is the point where you might want to increase the resolution of the Dynamesh tool from 1632, from 32 to 64 or you don't have to go exactly power of 2, you can go from 32 to 50 for example and um, you might not know this but lizards, reptiles actually hold a lot of fat in their tails that's where they retain their fat so if you're wondering why the dinosaur has such a fat tail it might be because he's holding a lot of fat there in addition to balancing the body and the other reasons that they have tails. Sometimes as you're sculpting you might get to certain problem areas, just areas that you can't quite get that kind of frustrate you and I've sculpted several T-Rexes now and the, the area that always frustrates me is the arms because they're because of their proportions and the way they're positioned it's always a little bit of a hassle for me to sculpt their arms so You'll notice me in this in this video, I'm kind of ignoring the arms until the last minute. They're, they're not particularly difficult, but just their positioning and the way the fingers are. And uh, it's actually quite thin. At, at this stage, I would say that the arms are still a little bit too thick. So here I am adjusting the jaw some more, making sure it matches the reference image. There will be a point when I stop using the reference image, but for now I'm still using it to match his, his, his uh, forms and proportions. And just going back with the clay build-up brush and smoothing things out, further defining the jaw. At this stage, you don't have to you don't have to spend all your time sculpting. You can sometimes stop sculpting and just kind of look. Uh, rotate around your geometry and just kind of analyze it. Here I am working on the legs, working on the joints and the muscles, the calves. His legs I think are still a little bit too thin at this point. But since the T-Rex is basically a giant walking mouth on legs, we definitely want to bulk up his legs that's how he's able to get his large mouth and jaw around as well as the large stomach so definitely gotta definitely gotta give him the the giant muscular powerful legs so we can he so he can look uh, functional and intimidating as well if you make a T-Rex with thin very thin legs then he won't look very intimidating or he won't look like he's actually functional so whenever you're sculpting a creature you know, we work in the 3D realm so with us it doesn't really matter what his legs are we can give the T-Rex chicken legs and because it's just you know we're just making animation it still works in other words our creatures don't have to be physically or practically created they can still work but that's why we have to spend more time actually creating the illusion of functionality. Whenever we work, we actually we don't we don't work with actual pra um, actual systems. We work with the illusion. So this T Rex, we have to create him with the illusion that he's large and powerful, and that his legs are able to support his massive weight and and size. So here I am fixing the proportions of the. Here I am using the transpose tool to kind of, he's a little bit too thick right now, a little bit too wide, so I'm just using the the scale tool to scale him in a little bit along with the move tool as well. So once you're done using your move rotator scale tools, you can go ahead and press Q to go back into sculpting mode. And here I am still working with the area around the arms. At this point, I'm not very satisfied with the arms. Still a lot of work to go on them. 
but I wanna what I do is when I have a problem area I will gradually return to that area and just work on it a little bit at a time when it comes to sculpting a T-Rex the most fun areas I think is is the head and the legs those are the most fun to work with for me at least the least area that the area that's least fun to work with is the arm because you really had to put a lot of work into it to make it look right and here I'm just inflating and moving around certain areas you I want to make sure that the arm looks proper from all angles so there I'm using my favorite technique again masking inverting the mask moving and then dynameshing and here I just made mask selection and then use the rotate tool to rotate his arms a little bit that should help that should help help fix the problem a little bit and make it easier to sculpt here I am building up the mass around the arms that will also help to visualize how the arms will be sculpted here I'm building up his thigh muscles leg muscles and there's a lot of reference images for dinosaurs and some of them try to be realistic and some of them are more s are more stylized so with some illustrations they make the dinosaurs look a lot more intimidating than they probably would look than they probably looked in real life and that's of course because they're taking some artistic liberties with the creatures and they want the creatures to be more intimidating a lot of dinosaurs were actually more bird-like if you look at the velociraptor for example the, the real velociraptor as scientists have uh, determined looked a lot more like a giant turkey than a giant lizard like what you would see in Jurassic Park and other movies and games however uh, you know artists make the decision and directors that a giant turkey is not as intimidating is not as scary as a giant lizard so they chose to go with the more lizard reptile approach with the raptors than the bird approach which might, might not be scientifically accurate but we're not creating some, something to go in the museum, we're creating a creature that's supposed to scare the player and intimidate the player. Here I'm creating more space for the inside of the thighs. I've determined that there's not enough space. The, the, the inner thighs are too close to the main body and so that kind of limits um, his animations. So I, I, you definitely uh, you can use several tools, you can use the standard tool, you can use the Damien standard, you can use the slash 3 brush to kind of cut inside the inner thighs and give them give more room to his inner thighs and his legs here I'm just using the standard brush to further define the jaw it doesn't look quite right yet but I'm, I'm working on it it's a like I said it's a gradual process you're not going to get impressive results right off the bat you need to spend some time on it just slowly refining things and analyzing your model from all angles so if you look at your geometry or if you look at the, at the scope right now you may think it looks pretty bad but the point is we're getting all the geometry in the right places and it will look good eventually it's a process it's a gradual process of refining and gradually adding shapes and forms until it looks the way we want it to look so don't be disappointed a lot of people get um, disappointed and frustrated when their geometry doesn't look as good as a professional's but they just need to realize that it will look ugly at, the, ugly at the beginning but if you spend time working on it and refining it it will eventually start looking good it will eventually start looking presentable so this is the first video we're getting all the geometry in the places it needs to be which will make our, our scoping it and adding details a lot easier sometimes though you can see I added some you know some wrinkles on the bottom of his neck and that's just to visualize that everything's where it needs to be sometimes you can add a wrinkle or some you know some small lines here and there just to kind of help you position its its general proportions so here I am getting a little bit more detailed but that's just to help me position his jaw here I'm using the Damien standard 
the Damien standard and the standard brush are very good for defining the edges of something. So to put it in, in human terms, if I was sculpting a face, I would use the Damien standard and standard brushes to define, you know, the brows, the, uh, the uh, cheek muscles, the jaws. I would define those areas first before I start working on any wrinkles around the mouth or anything like that. Here I'm spending some more time with the arms. I'm starting to like them a lot more. Here I press Control shift and select this area to isolate it, to hide the other geometry and just to, just to work with the arms alone. This can be good for to increase performance. If you have very, a lot of uh, polygons and, and vertices, it can slow down your performance. So now just go under Movie and Turntable to render a quick turntable movie of your sculpt. Thank you for watching Edge CGI. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with future videos and stay tuned for the second part of this series where I will sculpt a much more detailed and professional looking T-Rex. Mm -hmm.